completion of this tournament. But it's not that they're finished yet. We still have another match to come up for you guys. The upper semifinal will be coming up next. That's going to favor the sides of Jab Jab's Naughty Children, which those are not exactly children that I would want to run into in the future. And they will be playing up against Mapogo Esports, uh, a squad that I personally am not 100% familiar with. So we'll just see what they offer uh, but again, Jab Jab, of course, another very well-respected and well-known player in the North American scene coming up and trying to find their way in the semifinals. We'll find out who might be meeting up against Toxicity in the finals in the uh, completion and start, actually, of this next best of three semifinals in just a bit. Welcome back, everybody. I was going to make a joke, but I'll, I'll pause on that. <laughs> <laughs> We're having too much fun in the background right now is really what it comes down to. But here we are, Jaguar Falls map number one. It will be Jab Jab and his very naughty children going up against uh, the boys of Mapogo Esports. First band's coming out. It will be two frontliners again. And again, with Terminus being able to be played, uh, this is one of the contested picks that... It's one of those things that you either had to ban him or take him, it kind of feels like, because of his dominance up front, and it seems so far that nobody wants to deal with it, and it will be a Nara as the first overall selection. A solid pick here, seeing as the impasse wall and the treacherous ground, or just the warder's field without the buff, can be very devastating on such a close quarters map, especially when it comes to the point capture that everything starts off with. You know what could be even equally devastating? Torvald at the right corner of Jaguar Falls. Uh, yep. if, you get a good, if you get a good hyper beam, it's a, a little bit of a dunzo. Uh, no fun zone zone for anybody who's <laughs> caught on the other end of that one. But it looks like it actually is going to go over to the members of Mapogo, and they feel pretty confident with the Bomb King as well. Meanwhile, on the other end, Jab Jab's crew, I'm not going to call them the Naughty Children. It just seems weird. But Jab Jab's crew, locking in the Sha Lin and Maldamba. The last thing you need is to knock on your door from DCS talking about why are you talking about naughty children. Exactly. And I don't need I, that in I, my I, life. I feel you. I totally feel you. Sha Lin Maldamba are the lock -ins going over to the side now of Mapogo to get their own support it will be a hovered over genos to start things off and the, i think the big question here when you look at an r and a torvald is what frontliner do you want to pair them up with because neither of them have mobility so you really need somebody who can provide some sort of peel or that kind of baton pass of all right my shield's down you go up you take that front helm while i recharge and then back and forth and when you decide between you're either going to peel or you're going to pass uh, which sounds like a really awesome, like, you know, theme for, like, an orange party or something like that. Pass, pass and peel. Peel and pass. Exactly. And so far, it's actually just going to be Leon. So, opting to keep themselves kind of, uh, show, keeping that card close to them as far as what their final frontliner gonna, was going to be. And it will actually be Ruckus taken for Jab Jab. Uh, and his his gang of merry mischief. Is, uh, <laughs> yeah. See, it's awkward to say. <laughs> now it's like it's a prefrontal cortex say. thing for me now. Like I, as I'm about to say it, like I. I'm starting to correct myself as I'm about to say it. <laughs> I, I, the whole time I'm saying it, I'm just thinking like this is this is awkward to say. I just want to say jab jab's crew. If I'm saying jab jab, and then the second that, that that's the pause in my brain, and then <laughs> I have to say and force myself to go with the naughty children. Yeah, it's, yeah. There's just no way to say that appropriately. But Jab Jab's crew is going to finish off with a Maeve. Ruckus, a strong compliment to the Inara pick. They're just looking to put out as much damage, especially with the Maeve harassing the backside. Now, you asked about what they would pair with Torvald. It looks like Ash is going to be the decision. They want to utilize her CC, very minimalistic CC, but it still is enough to probably sway this fight and pick off targets that they really need to go ahead and eliminate in certain key junctures of this game. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I actually really enjoy the Maeve pick specifically just because, again, you saw Leon and Bomb Cave. Hello, welcome, welcome. We're back here. This is map number one between Jab Jab's Naughty's Children and Mapogo Esports. It will be on Jaguar Falls, and the rosters will be as follows. BD12K will be playing the Ruckus with Aerial Assault. Jab Jab himself on the Desert Shadow playing Shaolin. Spirits Chosen for the Maldama played by Kori014. You tried to. We'll be using Mother's Grace with the Nara, and it will be Rogue's Gambit actually switching that. It will be Artful Dodger for Conquester on the Maeve. And over the retros, we've got Mapogo. We've got Asha, Asha, Akashi Shinjuro being played by Torvald. We've got so Sky Roderman playing the Leon. And we've got Sai Coxie over in the Genos. And Dank on Bob King, as well as Yosin on Ash. 
And with a name like Dank, there's nowhere we can better start off than with Bomb King. We'll see how Dank he, in fact, is. Looking for shots over on the namesake of the map on Jaguar Falls. Nothing as of yet, but actually it's Jab Jab and Ruckus actually pulling kind of a polar flung Jab Jab over here in front of the falls. And Ruckus on the right-hand side has completely split apart from Pogo Esports. They are the victims of First Blood, but it's not all over yet. 27 now above 30% for Jab Jab. Mave is trying to move around the outside portion of this map. But again, the focus on the actual point itself is looking really solid between just this Anara and Maldamba. Maldamba tried to get through a little bit of a bounce pass to Ruckus, but still 66% as he's not able to keep him alive. Mapoko looking to come back in. They need to find some way to get here, Major. I don't think they're going to be able to do so very easily, but actually, in fact, Mapogo was able to push off a couple of members of Jab Jab, and now Jab Jab has to regroup, recollect, and re-get back onto the point. Don't mind the grammar there. And they're going to go <laughs> ahead and start to build some kind of offensive here as multiple members of Mapogo are getting dangerously low and getting picked off. Yeah, Ash able to see the first one taken down, so a frontliner down is good for Jab Jab's naughty children as they try to get themselves back on that less than naughty point. 90% for them and climbing up towards that completion. The impasse wall, well, too much of an obstacle for Torvald to come around with that low HP pool, will actually result in JJNC getting themselves the first point up now, one nothing, and actually finding another kill onto Bomb King, which is going to open up this push to move rather quickly. Now they're pushing five man strong. They've got a pretty good offensive going here. Maeve coming around the backside is going to regen some health naturally. And maybe actually the chase is going very strongly, but Maeve gets back into safety. And now Anara standing onto the capture point. She, or excuse me, standing on the objective. They are pushing pretty heavily. Well, look at this Maeve though. Look what she's doing. She's able to find herself on the left hand side perspective for JJNC, then move all the way back onto the right hand side, causing so much distraction. Able to find one kill on the Genos. Now has the Bomb King in her sight, but she's got no three charges there. Ooh. And will actually beat Leon, taking her down. As we heard the Enlightenment go out, did not convert for a kill earlier in that team engagement. The Hyper Beam as well, not resulting in much besides this defense stalling out the offense for a little bit longer. We're about a minute and 30 seconds until overtime, and the poke is actually going rather nicely for Mapogo. Leon getting some shots in here and there, but now the Midnight looking to open things up. Schroeder trying to find a way to keep this Mave in control, but not able to find yeah. much. The Hexafire right up to the left-hand side of the map will not find much as well. Finally, an ultimate comes out that does have some kind of effect, and that's the Dread Serpent, and that converts three kills and make that a fourth as Jab Jab is able to find the trailing Leon. Now Bomb King forced to reconsider his choices as he walks very miserably back towards base, but is not actually going in and is falling very low. Will he actually fall? He will. What a mistake there by Dank. Now 53 seconds until overtime, Major, and this is numbers for Jab Jab. Yeah, I'm not seeing really a good defensive positioning here for them to get, even be able to remotely stop Jab Jab here. The ultimates come out, but I don't know if they're necessarily going to do anything. Ash might be the last standing survivor for the rest of the members of Mapogo as Bomb King makes his way in. Oh, but the crowd control immunity from that Anara in the Mother's Grace able to keep her through that stun. Not able to find much connection whatsoever. He's going to have to find a couple sticky bombs here to do damage. But again, it's Maeve on the backside able to help out so much. But look at the positioning at Maldamba sitting so far in the back, just throwing out out gourds and mending spirit charges and that's actually going to keep everybody alive very nicely while they push through the payload Two nothing goes the score line and again look at the top left side of your screen it's been very dominant in the kill streaks active for everybody but Maldamba now I hate Maeve's new skin but I love watching a good Maeve player and I think that I think that definitely Conquestor has been playing a fantastic Maeve he's definitely been selfless when it comes to going in the backside being a absolute havoc for the rest of the members of Mapogo and saying all right deal with me deal with me deal with me deal with me what are you gonna do what are you gonna do and all of a sudden they have to use so many resources to either a try to keep someone alive or b actually take out Maeve that they end up losing a couple of members to any of the pot shots coming out from Jab Jab uh Benny 12k anybody yeah, and on the other side of things, too, you look at just the heal ability that's coming out of Maldamba versus the Genos. He's nearly two times higher than his opponent, and that's going to cause a lot of concern as well, just not having the survivability while Maeve is just able to freely move left and right as she continues to do so here on the left-hand side. Smizman Crash is coming out. It will not find much, though, although JJNC is trying to move forward and pass well will block off Ash, actually forcing her now to fight up against the Maeve and the Ruckus, but they're able to do so nicely because Dang. of the damage coming out of Bomb King. They're able to find two kills, and now backing up is JJNC as they try to reach that same limit, which was 39% for JJNC. JNC.
I'm telling you, if I was on their team, anytime Dank did a double kill, triple kill, any kind of hot play, I'd be like, Dank! That's that's, <laughs> that's his call out. That's his name. That's how he, that's how he operates. But, you know, a really good starting point for Mapogo. They need to get on this point and get that last couple of percentage just to lock in that capture point and get it. There it is, Mapogo getting on the board. Yeah, a little bit too late of a surge from Jab Jab's Naughty Children as they were not able to find the kills quite in time. You see, they are dominating the kill feed now, which will actually force the side of Mapogo back while they're waiting for respawns, but if that would have came three seconds earlier, we may have had a different result on the scoreboard, but a good hold from Mapogo, able to zone out nicely, keep everyone kind of in their corners, and allow them to get a much needed point on the board, but still, now we need to find a way to get this offense moving. Midnight's gonna hinder that a little bit longer, and a lot of low HP pools actually from Mapogo on the right-hand side of this map, perspectively for them, and actually not able to find any kills, and now finally able to find the Leon who was lingering for a while. Now looking to turn these numbers into a distinct advantage for positioning is the blue side of JJNC. The one thing that gave him Pogo and they went ahead and gave it all to just go ahead and cap that point is the fact that they could regroup and then come back strong. The one thing that wasn't considered from ja or from Mapogo on the jab jab is that they still have to be very conservative on how they approach that captured uh, objective. Now, Ruck is on the backside, actually doing quite a bit of damage. Yeah, but does fall, and on the front hand side of things, Jab Jab, the team leader here, is actually able to find one kill onto the double A, double N wielding name of Dank. Not able to find a double kill this time, as now they're moving to the right hand side, but drawing his way over, but it will be the Seed Shield for Ash blocking that one from converting what would be a large chunk of her HP, thanks to the Desert Shadow Legendary that he had selected. Right hand side actually still coming through with Lightning coming out. Not able to find anything as Conquester is able to find Genos. Now looking for the Leon who's got herself a shield. Torvald is trying to assist, but the cooldowns are too long as Conquester is able to find himself a double kill. 50 seconds until overtime, and this payload has barely even reached the center point so far. Yeah, this is unfortunate for the guys in Mapoko. They still have an opportunity with 42 seconds left, but they need to make a play happen here soon. And with Ruckus laying waste on the front side and getting a lot of help and healing from Madomba, I'm not seeing it happen anytime soon. Uh, it's a long distance to go, even over 30 seconds. If they were not contested, it might be able to reach them before overtime, but you can see the positioning of Jab Jab and his naughty shoulder right up front. A nice shoulder bash, but it actually will catch a stun on the back half of it from Eldama. Now the solo ult coming out as well. Will they be able to convert the HP pool? It looks like it was mostly used as a retreat, but Anara is very low. Unfortunately, the Gord is there to keep her alive. Ash is now overextending. The health pools are back to nearly full. Still, with three seconds left, Ash just retreats back to the front side of the payload and is able to help push that one through. No kills really coming out yet. Oh! Actually, on the right hand side, does have a nice grippy bomb put down. Jab Jab falling very low. Can he find the sticky bombs? Not able to find much though, as he goes in the yeah. desert shadow. And again, this tank is just, he's he's getting some damage in there, but he's not finding the kills. Jab Jab will reconvert and get himself a double kill. Now on the backhand side, planning up, looking for Ash, but. Will not be able to find that quite yet as Battery Ram is finding not much distance whatsoever. And a nice Mending Spirits from Kori will be able to keep them alive. 3-1 goes the score, but an opportunity kind of missed there from a Pogo in my opinion. Man, I was rooting for it. I was like, dang! He was just <laughs> laying waste on everybody on the point, And he was just saying, all right, if I can just land some of these bombs. It all started out when he went ahead and took out Maeve. He just needed one more kill to truly be safe because all the focus was on the front line from the guys of Jab Jab. But Pogo just needed to get rid of one more person for them to feel, excuse me. Yeah, Mapogo needed to get rid of one more person just to be able to focus on the rest of the team and have a safe and controlling Bomb King. But unfortunately, it didn't work out for them. This time around, though, it's game point. They need to make a play happen. And it needs to come from Bomb King. He's sitting near the bottom of the charts, so only at 35k damage. And the rest of his teammates are trying to keep it, things moving in the right direction. Leon is at 50. You leave Dank alone. Yeah, I, well, I mean, he's got to get called out when he's not able to get the damage done on Bomb King. They need him really badly here. We'll see if he can provide. Midnight does come out, though, for Maeve. Looking for uh, action up front. The Hexafire combined oh, with that darkness. Here comes the King Bomb, but will be taken down by Jab Jab before it can find its full reach and efficiency. And now it's just the frontliners left to run away as we are up to 27% each, climbing now above that for JJ. JNC, and now Jab Jab is just taking this one in stride for his boys as he's on his 11th streak, looking to make it 12, but will fall back having kind of a lower than half HP health pool to his name. You know, as soon as you said that, I was just thinking of Jab Jab saying, now watch here, children. Watch what I do to this enemy <laughs> team. Uh, but yeah, he's just doing work. I mean, even right now, you see him just laying waste to Torvald. Didn't pick up the kill, but was able to do the most damage. And Jab Jab walking away with the victory there. 
Yeah, I, I feel like Jab Jab's Naughty Children is like the opposite of the children's show of like Mr. Rogers Street, like in his neighborhood. This is a totally different realm of possibility when you consider Jab Jab as a children's television host, I think. And we'll leave that thought there, I think. But Jab Jab himself, <laughs> 14, 2, and 12, 82K damage, topping the charts in just about every facet that he could possibly do so. And again, the healing numbers, that's where things really kind of stand out for me. Maldamba from Go here doing such a great job. Doesn't die a single time. Gets himself 131.6K healing. The, mo the numbers are just monstrous for him, and that was a lot of the reason why that front line did favor the side of JJNC. You know, I'm going to agree with you on one aspect, and it makes me sad. But I, I think the number that stands out more to me is the lack of damage coming out yeah, from bro. Dank. Dank sitting as the lowest damage dealer out of the entire bunch, uh, actually even falling below some characters who aren't even typically at the you know upper epsilon of, of, of damage numbers, like, for example, Maeve, who is a heavy damage dealer. Don't get me mistaken, but she doesn't bring the near same amount of power as Bomb King, who has a lot of AoE, a lot of just bomb damage with his autos. I mean, he has so much more potential, and he just didn't rise up to that. Yeah, those look like my damage numbers when I try to play Bomb King. Woo! They're and not, you wonder why Shadow will kill so with you. You <laughs> wonder why he won't kill with you. Let's not talk about it. Let's go ahead and drink things back. It will be map number two coming up. JJ and C looking to punch their ticket to the finals against Toxicity. They're one map away. Let's see if they can, can do that right when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Into the draft we go. Map number two. Another tight confines map, this time on Frog Isle. And uh, I, I am willing to put a bet that we're going to see. Oh, I, I, I'm going to change my mind. I don't. <laughs> you were so confident. I was so I'm confident sorry. that it was going to be Mikoa Terminus for the rest of the night, and then they banned Shala to make me look like please, a fool. Please tell me you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy two. I actually haven't. It's on my list. Never mind. Yeah. The for the for the viewers, if you have seen it, there's a scene with Batista, uh, uh, the, the big guy who who is just laughing hysterically at the the, the main character. This is me <laughs> right now, but I, I'm I'm definitely liking that you were about to say that Terminus was going to be banned here, and then essentially he got allowed and first pick. But you have to understand, <laughs> Jab Jab does not <laughs> want to let Shaolin through to the other side. That's interesting to see, and you wonder if, with that, obviously you have to be thinking, okay, we're going to be playing up against a Terminus, how are we going to deal with it? And those answers will likely come as the draft continues on. So Terminus, the first overall selection, it was a Maldamba and Nara picked up as the healer-frontliner combination for the front line of JNC. And it will be Torvald Willow. So this is where it becomes very interesting, and I am, I'm going to call one here. I'm going to call one here. I would love to see a Tyra pick come out. We have two very low mobility frontliners where that firebomb is just going to chew through all of that health pool. But the Willow is the interesting pick here because she could really get flanked on again very easily. And this is not a, necessarily a map where Maeve is bad at. I mean, the thing is that if we're going to be honest here, this is the team composition that so far is not really played that much against. I mean, this is what, the first, first time we've seen Terminus today? I mean, maybe there is some truth to Jab Jab not being able to handle both the Terminus, what they may have planned for, and the Willow. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Leon is actually taken here, which is an uh, interesting choice. Again, if she, she does go with the Alacrity build, which allows her Grace to hit all targets in front of her, she can get a lot more damage across multiple targets. The Ruck is also bringing in some single, tire, uh, single fire focus uh, for the damage dealing capabilities of JNC. Janos will be selected as the support. And that's where things become interesting. Taking the Maldamba. Maldamba, obviously, okay. being able to heal multiple targets, there's no one better. Janos struggles a little bit, but... When Kronos gets online, he can really help out. Victor will be the last final choice for the side of Mapogo, interestingly enough. And, ooh, look at this. We're going to have a Grover come out late. Yeah, and I really like Grover. I mean, I just like watching people tomahawk from across the map. But, you know, going over to what you said, Tyra, you wanted her. You got Victor, which her. is... Close. Those yeah, I mean, it's close. It's, it's, the same, it's the same idea, sort of. Doesn't have, you know, necessarily the carpet effect, but he does bring a lot to the table. I think, personally, for me, I like this better after watching what we saw out of these guys the last time around. Uh, you know, Mapogo didn't necessarily finish off too many kills, and I think with Victor's AoE and with his just straight damage over a long period of time, I, I think this may fit their composition slightly better. 
Yeah, we'll take a look. The Victor choice, very interesting. But again, no flank pressure from really either squad. The Grover choice, well, the one that comes through, is I imagine will be ferocity from the back line, just trying to funnel in as many axes as possible into those big bodies up front. We'll see how that plays out. Map number two, Frog Isle, coming up to you guys. It's very shortly. Don't go anywhere to possibly see who punches their ticket into beating Toxicity the Grand Finals. Just a minute. Hello and uh, welcome back, everybody. This is map number two between JNC and Mapogo Esports. This time, Mapogo rocking the blue. Starting from the bottom up, it will be the direct current selected for the Torvald play by Yosin. Dang! On the Blast Flower. Will. Yes! It will be Gunnery for Akashi Sinjuro on the Victor. Psychoxy number one on Celestial Touch Genos. And it will be Undying selected for the Terminus played by Scroder Man. Meanwhile, in the red jerseys, we have Jab Jab and his lovely friends, not Naughty Children, Vinny 12K on Ruckus. We've got You Tried To on Anara, Jab Jab on the, uh, on the Grok. It's, no, not Grok. Gosh, it's freaking. All right, Corey, that'd be the, that'd be the 14. Grover. That'd be the Grover. <laughs> yeah, I big, keep forgetting it because I want to say Sylvanas. I'm a, I'm a filthy <laughs> smite player. I know. That the was worst. the first thing that came to mind. Grover, excuse me. Corey, 14 on the Maldamba, and then Conquestor on Leon. Ah. And it will be Jab Jab on Grover throwing axes from the window and actually hitting a lot of bodies thus far. And again, that extra damage. Ooh, chunking away almost half the HP pool of Willow right there. And now switching targets. And Victor will just barely escape with his life. Meanwhile, Anara on point is completely immovable whatsoever. 66 percent early on of the damage of the poke is just too much from jab jab his numbers already have to be sky high and they are eleven thousand. he's twice higher than anybody else on the on the field right now 87 percent now coming back in getting a blossom over towards the inara and this will likely go the way of jnc it will torvald again this is where we talked about early on with having a torvald and a tournament is neither of them can close distance very quickly when they're dismounted so if you don't get that point early it's going to be hard to come back and grab it again well, I mean, it's always going to be difficult, but Torvald, he has other benefits on Frog Isle, especially with the ultimate. So I'm expecting to see him really start to shine in later positions of the game, but not in capping the point. Meanwhile, though, I think that Grover here with his ultimate is going to set up the members of Jab Jab to just keep pressing. Yeah, they're aggressive. They're coming in. Ara is actually walking right past Torvald, trying to keep the Willow zoned out and then turning her focus back towards the double frontliners of the TNT brothers, Terminus and Torvald alike, but not finding the success I think that JNC wanted as they're forced back after they lost one member. Now Ruckus is completely on the other side of the map. He does catch himself that aerial assault in retreat fashion all the way back towards his teammates. But again, that damage not being there was very noticeable. And this is where the Grover pick is interesting because he does not have long lines of sights. So how will his damage really come into play? Terminus going with a Shatterfall up and over. We'll try to jump on. But and again, Ruckus is over here by himself on the left-hand side, keeping the Willow busy. Oh, and Terminus yeah. and Torvald falling very low meanwhile. And it looks like both of them shall fall, though Torvald will get himself a recharge and try to get away. But it will be a chase from Inara and Leon to finish him off. A minute, 10 to overtime, and now finally the payload starting to move forward once again. And not losing a single person was Jab Jab's team. They all stayed nice and healthy. I mean, even Ruckus, who got a little dangerously low after zoning and going onto the side to just flank a little bit. Oddly enough, the front line are flanking. But, I mean, they're just keeping the pressure up and not really having much contention with the Mount Dumba healing, keeping everyone nice and healthy. Yeah, and that whirlwind that came out early was another part of that. Seismic crash coming down. We'll only find Terminus. He's falling low and will drop the hyper beam, though. We'll send yep. two off. Grover tried to find on, but use it just a little bit too soon and actually goes the way of genos for the kills although it was the hype beam that found the distance to depart them off the map and now again you can see the chase is coming in dank able to find one leon will just narrowly be able to escape with her life although if she peeks so oh, almost almost got hit there by those last shots from the celestial rifle of genos but does escape with her life 15 seconds left this is going to be a tough distance to make up I, I think that honestly speaking, Jab Jab's not going to be able to push through for this uh, for this last push. They're not going to be able to get past this defense, but they're going to definitely try. And R has touched the point. She is here. Overtime is going to be starting, and that is going to be Grover coming in as well as Mild Damba. They're trying to get the distance in. Ruckus hanging on the backside. Victor coming in with the ultimate, but he's going to be knocked out. And there you go. Desperation mode for Akashi playing the victor and. When you take a look at what just happened, Inara literally had to walk from the center point of the map all the way to the payload, which was, again, nearing that downward slope towards the end, and the focus was just not there. She didn't have to use an impasse wall at any point in time. She used one warder's field. 
How is the focus not going straight on to Inara? Why is Terminus not in her face, beating her up the entire way? The answer is we will not know, probably ever. But taking a look at the <laughs> itemization, Rejuvenate is coming online for Jab Jab's team, as we are seeing three of those coming up with the double what? Kronos from Aldama. I don't know, man. Just let me go with it, all right? <laughs> what kind of terrible episode of Dragon Ball Z is this? The worst Why kind. did they ignore Inara? We'll never know on the next episode <laughs> of Dragon Ball. We don't know. Anyway, I mean, yeah. you know, it was it was difficult because at the end of the day, you're always trained in casuals and everything like that to ignore. Holy crap, that, that ultimate actually might have set up a lot more, but it, and, you know, basically wait. don't... Focus, don't focus the tanks. That's all I'm trying to say. Don't focus the tanks. It's casual mindset. Well, yeah, exactly. There was one axe, actually, that came out from Jab Jab onto the Fairy Flight from Willow that actually dissuaded her from getting too aggressive with it. The reanimate coming out for Terminus, although he did fall early on from the Ruckus. And now, again, 50% from Apogo. The combat mechanic is mounting very highly for them. Victor falling low, and someone's going to have to get in to contest this point. Inara, again, walking her stroll right up front, not taking any damage whatsoever. We'll get there to contest. The Whirlwind is here. Enlightenment coming out with Dread Serpent. Finding one, finding two. Looking for Terminus as the third. No reanimate here. And Jam Jam will find himself two kills in that spree. And uh, that will be enough to at least get Jam Jam a chance to get onto the point and try to match the 78%, but it's going to take a while. Again, that 4% coming out per tick from Apogo allowed them to get a lot of control early on. Yeah, but with Ruckus just acting as a front zoner, I mean, he, that's one of the things he does so well is just act as a barrier between the other team and your own. And he's always good at making sure that he can keep uh, a distracted unit away from the, the team fight or away from the main focus. Now, it's a matter of whether or not they can get past that, but now Ruckus is going around the back end. Yeah, and Dank is here to try to put this, but an axe of fire right in her face will force her away. Jab Jab's trying to stay alive as the rest of the team is here, getting one kill. The Genos will fall away to that hex of fire and now oh, trying to push right into the face of the Willow, who's got very low mobility when that cooldown of Flutter goes through. And Dank will have to fall back, but actually peeks just enough to catch the top of her head with one of those giant axes from Jab Jab. 3 0 goes the score. And Akashi and the rest of the squad of Mapogo are left kind of reeling after that one. They were up so big, but could just not recontest after that initial pushback. You know, there's always a swing moment, and that one was so heavy. Uh, Jab Jab's crew not losing anybody, and then on top of that, you have Mapogo just basically getting wiped. And in fact, I think it actually was a full official wipe. It's just so difficult to come back from. But right now, it looks like Mapogo is definitely taking the tempo. Yeah, one Hyper Beam was able to push off M Maldaba, and... Jab Jab falling as well means there's no support and Mapogo seem to know what kind of an advantage that can bring. They have pushed all the way forward towards the front entrance of Jab Jab and his crew's spawn. Now with full five though, JNC looking to come back. Terminus in a really bad spot, will be impassed off. Does he have a reanimate? He does. The question is, will he choose to use it? The answer will surely be no as none of his yeah. teammates are there. And that will yeah. now put the advantage into Jab Jab's favor as they move forward. They find two kills of their own. Both frontliners are gone. The Genos is in a little bit of trouble here. And all five players are able to funnel their damage right into him. So now three players gone and staggered for that matter. While JNC starts to move this payload forward finally. You know, there's always a tendency as Terminus to feel way more confident than the rest of your team is. And so you end up separated from the rest of your guys. And then all of a sudden, you ended up in a bad spot. And yeah, you want to talk about that happening. He did it again. But this time, he's going to go ahead and pop his ability and uh, try and get a second breath in this fight. But already back down to 50%. Yeah, back and forth it goes as now we're seeing the OC and able to find himself two kills as Torvald. Reanimate came out as successful zoning and a lot of damage funneled, although none for kills, but still the damage was felt and done. 42 seconds until overtime, and once again we're seeing J and C have to come back, but this time the positioning not so much in favor of Mapogo as, again, Torvald and Terminus do not have mobility, so the further they extend, the more danger Ooh. that they put themselves in, but a nice Shatterfall coming out of Terminus right on top of the Noggin of Leon, able to convert that kill, and Torvald able to recharge his health just narrowly back up, as finally Anara is on point, but again, numbers do favor the blue side of Mapogo. Shatterfall up and over for Terminus. He's trying to stay alive, but not catching the heals he needs, so he will eventually fall. Numbers now favoring JNC as they trade back and forth one against another. Torvald falling low. He will be able to recharge behind the tree for free, and JNC will now push this one through. It's Will ultimates come out, I think, is the big question here, Major. Not a lot available for the offense as far as game-changing ones go. Well, now the Whirlwind is here, and that will actually pop very early on, and Willow will use her own. 
yeah, they need to make a defense here because it's game point, but at the same time, I feel like it's justifiable for Jabba, or excuse me, Jabba, Jab Jab's crew to go ahead and pop their own ultimates because you want to go ahead and push this one out as soon as possible. There's a whole nother set that you have to worry about after this game. Save your mental strength, save your, you know, focus for the rest of the night. You don't want to get too exhausted. Try and get through, and if you can do it, do oh, it. But if not... I, I, that was actually a little puzzling to me. It looks like they were trying to set something up was J and C to try to get some ultimates in to finalize that push, but everyone just kind of separated a little bit too far, so it will actually result in a successful defense as that overtime continued to tick away. Itemization coming in. We're getting to that mid to late game status, especially for J and C who have captured themselves two straight points. Resiliences and rejuvenates alike coming online. The budget builds, as we say, points coming on nicely. 15, and a couple seconds. morale boosts actually moving with that. Damage dealt charts actually favoring Pogo rather heavily. Coming out for the side of Victor at 94.5k thousand damage. And Willow, Five, played by Dink, finally four, finding himself up in the three, top three at 676.9k. And it is Jab Jab at 76k, the next closest, with the exception of Leon, who's a good 23k below that. You know, the problem has not been the damage numbers. The problem has definitely been just the fact that they can't seem to find the team synergy. And their front line and the back line are on two different pages. I mean, even right now, you're seeing the front line kind of get really up there. And if anything was to happen there, you're going to be in a bad spot. Yeah, Torvald has now been completely separated thanks to one Warders field and one impasse. But Willow's actually pushing nicely with the Sonara as the one who finds herself in trouble. No support for her team, while Leon had fallen over on the right-hand side by the Frog statue. So interesting to see JNC, who opted to get on point first, actually take the first two deaths in this team fight. And it's actually Mapogo who find themselves again with comeback mechanic above now 70%. Rock is just trying to throw out the damage and... It looks like we're going to see the uh, ultimates come out from quite a few members. Wow. Hexafire comes out as well as a couple of others. They're really trying to make this happen. Yeah, through space and time was able to be put right on top of Ruckus, who was there using the Hexafire. So he fell quickly. Fadeflight trying to come out, but Anara actually finds herself an unlikely double kill, but no one able to contest the reanimated Terminus, who finds them their first payload and a kill on the back end of that. 3 2 goes to Scorpapogo, looking to have, like they have some new life. You know, I, I really do question whether or not Terminus being in this game at all completely changes the dynamic of what the results are. Because Terminus has been such a crucial factor, reanimating at the perfect times to just make it difficult for, excuse me, for Jab Jab to actually continue that fight. I, I mean, it's definitely a factor here. Yeah, and he actually has the Wrecking Ball 3 card, which increases his leap distance on Channerfall by 30%, and he's actually going with a 24% crowd control reduction with Forsaken 3, and on top of that, he has the lack of mobility into his kit as well as it follows 2, so he can't be slowed below 70%. That mobility seems to be a focus for him. He does not have Nimble on his kit, but doesn't seem to need it as he continues to slash and burn his way through. One power siphon out as he tries to fall back towards the payload, which has moved rather well. Dread Serpent coming out, but again, the resilience coming in even nicer for the frontliners of Mapogo. As now Willow finding a kill on the Jab Jab, who actually, I think, procced that Whirlwind before he fell, so no charge no, on that. And the Jab Jab and his naughty children might actually find themselves in a tie as the payload has narrowly almost completed its path. The Terminus is trying to stay on. The Kashi is trying to throw some bullets from downtown with Victor. He does have a barrage available if he decides to pull that trigger. We'll opt for just the one grenade instead of the big barrage charges and actually falling back as Terminus falls away. So uh, JNC holding on, but just narrowly. I mean, it's a whole minute they have to hold out, and that just gives time for the members of Mabogo to regroup up, allow for their Terminus to get back into the fray, and... I don't know. This is so difficult because it's right there. It is the payload is looking at the point, saying, "Yo, what up, fam?" <laughs> I mean, the, I'm not seeing a defense here, but maybe we'll have to see exactly how this plays out. 30 seconds until overtime, as our third commentator very appropriately lets us know, and it's actually JNC who is finding themselves actually being pushed back a little bit, but a couple of clutch axes and the Terminus will take him down. He does have an ultimate available if they want this payload push. He's going to have to activate it, but will opt not to. So 13 seconds left. What else might be used here? You can see all of those celestial touches are coming out, those astral marks. But it looks like it's not going to be anyone able to go through. Torvald is moving himself up towards the middle portion of the road, but he doesn't have the support here, and he's not going to be able to touch in time. So it will stay 3-2 to two on the scoreboard. And will Torvald fall at the end? Not quite, but Victor will nah, find himself two kills. So a little extra credit bonus for him. Uh, he goes back to base to spend away. 
you know, I think there was a split decision there. Terminus went a little too far, and they had the yeah. opportunity to use the reanimate to go ahead and say, all right, should we should we at least give this another chance? Because this is us giving up this opportunity to bring the score to even. And the rest of the team called, let's give it up. We have a better chance of capping this next point and going for, a, a, you know, a, a payload uh, completion than we do winning this fight right now. Yeah, the healing and damage numbers are actually rather close, about 30k or so. The difference between Meldamba and Geno's damage numbers are actually favoring Mapogo. So take one away from one, give the bonus to another, as the ultimate economy is actually very close as well. Four out of five for Mapogo, all five available for Jab Jab. This first fight shall be rather explosive, and we're going to see the Fate Flight off the bat to start things off. Pushing forward is the blue side of Mapogo. You can see they're getting aggressive. Terminus and Torvald both. One on point, one down the main road. Anara's not really able to stand up so much against this axe, who's just chewing through her health pool. Power Siphon coming out, and a hyper beam from the back line will actually send one flying. That's Meldamba and Dank finding two kills. This is trouble for the boys of JNC. 48%, only a slight comeback mechanic there, but it's going to be enough to get them to at least above 80 before anyone can even get there, oh. if not the full point. It's Jab Jab falling in staggered fashion. And Mapogo, with that new life, will find themselves a point here. And interesting. We will see a pause. <laughs> I don't know if they did that on purpose, but that was trolls. Like, no! Had no to have been. <laughs> I, I'm lost. I'm at a loss at the moment, personally. <laughs> As Major I'm continues sorry, to lose funny his to me. stuff. That's funny to me. There that's has to be some kind me. of a connection issue as Conquestor ends up pausing it for his team as well. Uh, but let's take this time. We haven't spent a lot of time looking at all of the different charts. I mean, we're, we're seeing people get above six digits on damage dealt. It is the victor at almost 150k thus far. And Willow with ones across the board for the second leading damage. And it's actually Grover and Torvald above Leon, which is... Really where a lot of the question marks kind of come into play when it came to Leon to begin with. We had those questions in draft of, will she be able to get the damage done to these big health pools? And the answer has been rather definitively, not so much. Well, I mean, there is some merit to the damage that's dealt by Conquestor right now because you have to look over at the other end of the map where you have Terminus, who is 5 and 11. Uh, he, he's actually ended up dying a little bit more often than you would expect from a frontliner, a little bit more often than you would like ideally. Yeah. That being said, it, it's not necessarily bad deaths. It's, it's more or less like, oh, okay, you know, I had to do this. It, it's, it's selfless deaths from a frontliner. So I think that there's merit to both arguments, but I, I definitely think that Conquestor Quester is not performing to the same stature that we saw in the first game. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And it could just come down to the fact that you are dealing with almost two completely opposite types of damage when you're dealing with a Maeve who is all mobility, all harassment all the time versus someone like Leon who really only finds value when you're hitting those consistent shots and finding big, pre uh, precise, precision-based shots with that 800 damage throughout whoever it hits. And to be honest, this has been kind of a trend lately for a lot of Leon players. Not many Enlightenments are connecting for the, for the full damage or full health pool of their targets, so we're not getting that 50% charge. We're only hearing Enlightenments coming out once in a blue moon. So the next stage of the game, we have a pay payload captured by Mapogo. I, I really don't know necessarily if they can go ahead and complete it. There is a strong line of defense by the guys on the side of Jab, but is it enough? I mean, Maldam has an ultimate, Leon has an ultimate, Grover has an ultimate, as well as Ruckus, the Hexafire, a great tool for defensive maneuvers. I, I have to argue that Mapogo has a tall task to actually go up against this heavy, heavy, heavy defensive unit. They will have that tall task, but a lot of room to poke, as you can see the Genos on the payload is moving it for essentially by himself, while Victor and the rest of his squad are trying to move things on the right-hand side. An impasse wall, though, will block off the Terminus. What will he be able to find? He's got four charges on his Calamity Burst, but will actually fall. Reanimate will come back into play, though. Not able to find any damage as he was in kind of a tight corridor, so not much there. A huge shatter fall up and over, looking for the shots on the layout, but will not be able to convert it. And a whirlwind coming out, will there be enough cauterize to take down the, nope. the ruckus? There will be. So a 90% reduction in healing. It is dangerous and deadly in the late game. And Jab Jab, who had so much success to start the game, is starting to find himself really not doing a whole heck of a lot in the late portions of this game. The payload is now stalled out, but it's very close to pushing Anara, one of the last obstacles remaining. They will actually go the way of Mapogo for that kill. Looking to come through, Dreadserver comes out, will finally take down the Terminus, no reanimate available here. And now finally, JNC with some defensive pressure, able to find a couple of key kills. Willow by herself will actually trade out one more before she will surely fall. 
Well, the flutter comes Surely. out of the barrage, trying to get her. What? What is happening? Dank is still alive, Dang. and there, finally, she falls. I thought for a second she might be able to escape. The barrage was there for some damage peel, but not enough damage there to get her out of the fray. So 55 seconds, seconds in overtime, left. just getting closer oh, and closer. 55. Yeah. Got there for a second, but this is definitely difficult for the guys on the side of Jab Jab. They don't seem to have any real answer uh, to deal with some of this pressure coming out from the guys of Mapogo, and a lot of it's coming from Skydro, man. He's actually doing a fantastic job of knowing when exactly to use his ultimate and when to not. Reanimate being a very crucial part and very crucial key to how this team's operating. Yeah, he does fall there, Dank as well. So now the numbers not favoring Mapogo, and they will be chased out. It's going to be up to Psychoxy trying to keep everyone alive. He's able to do so through the wall with that Astral Mark, and you can see him doing that, but he actually catches an axe just around the corner from Jab Jab, and that one will surely be the nail in this attempt as they put this one to rest. Eight seconds until we get to overtime. No one's going to really be able to touch, though. It's just a formality at this point to see what other damage can come across. Torvald's going to give it one go, but I don't think he's got it the legs to get there. And in pass wall will be sure that that doesn't happen, and he will be converted for a kill. So 3-3. Ultimates did get farmed up there, though, Major. We're looking at a pretty even spread. It does favor JNC, if just not narrowly, but they have not had a lot of success on the last two capture points. Uh, they haven't had any success, really. I mean, nothing has been clean this entire map. Frog Isle, I guess, is the bad luck charm for the guys of, you know, Jab Jab. But last game looked pretty similar to what we watched the last series. And then this game has been a lot more even, which is definitely more fun for me and definitely more fun for the spectators. And I hope more fun for you. I don't know. I can't speak on your behalf. I'm having, I'm but, having a lot of fun. Uh, you sound like you're having no fun. <laughs> You sound like a very, very sad individual watching this game. Like, oh, gosh, they actually came back. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. My, you know, Mapogo not going down quietly. It's honestly a toss-up, and there's going to be a lot of ultimates coming out to see who is going to take this next point. And Willow will be the first one to start off that ceremony with ultimates coming out. The Faith Flight trying to shoot over the top, and it will be a Shatterfall action to help support some of that damage. So a good early zone. But, again, that combat mechanic is not there. Seismic Crash comes out and actually finds the rest of the health pool of Torvald. Geno get stunned out barrage coming up but whirlwind is there as well to help counter literally all of that damage so favor jnc they have the numbers a big shatterfall once again coming up and a dread serpent being used the reanimate coming out this is much more favorable as far as the position but no one's close enough to take any of that damage away conquester with an enlightenment will finally find a kill that time it came through on the behalf of victor terminus is trying to contest torvald's back as well so the tnt brothers are once again putting up a fight for their lives but that is short-lived for the rest of Terminus is helpful. Now favoring JNC, here comes the Hyper Beam off the map. Will it find the Inara? It looks like it will. And now it's just up to Ruckus to hold this one down, but he's getting shredded apart. So even battles across the board here, another Willow ultimate coming out. Oh, but they're still going at it. Victor in a boxing match with Leon. It looks like she's going to be able to win this one. Is able to pick up that kill. And now Grover plus Leon is trying to find some kind of answer, but too many members of <laughs> Mapogo just going at it. Grover with a whirlwind. He's trying to stay alive. Immediately gets so. smacked off. Oh, the hex of fire though on the high fire. ground looking to come on top of this platform. It will not be able to find much. It will find Dank, but he's getting shredded through the Terminus. The power of the axe too much as Anara falls. Ruckus was close to falling to that as well. Torvald will be there to zone. And it might just be enough here. Both frontliners are down. Woo! Has Mapogo done it? Then the comeback, they were down 3-0. They make it four straight points. Overtime's funneling away through space and time just to zone things through. And it will be Mapogo Esports with the comeback. A 4-3 victory here on Frog Isle. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> Whoop, there it is. I mean, yo, seriously, that, that's actually fantastic because we know about Jab Jab. And if I'm going to be honest, I'm a little against them because their name is Jab Jab and the Naughty Children. And well, shame on you. You can only control Jab so Jab much. and the Friends. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is that they did a great job. Dank. This game actually came out a little bit better than he did last time. I, feel, I still feel that there's a couple of cautionary points that I'm worried about for Dank. But at the same time, with his scoreline looking a lot better, actually, mm, yeah, second top damage in the game. I, I'm a little bit more comfortable watching this team go through. Um, Mapogo has played a, a much more concise game. Now, granted, the one factor that I think has to be mentioned is that they were able to pick up a character who's typically banned. That's the big, well, has been typically banned at least thus far today. And he found himself 86k damage, a nice number considering that he finds himself uh, up in the charts as far as generally right in the middle, actually, I guess is the best way to put it. But I think you go and take a look at what they were missing last game. That was the Bomb King not putting out enough damage. And 
Traditionally, we see a lot of Bomb King on this map not being picked up. It's actually Dank finding himself on Willow, and he finds himself nearly 150k damage. That's a lot. Of, I mean, it's heads and shoulders of performance above what he had last time, and he was a huge factor in making sure that Victor, who was rather free the entire game, did the damage he did. I mean, 192,000 damage, actually almost mimicking the healing numbers that came out of Psychoxy, which is still pretty significantly below the Maldamba at 233k. It's just, at the end of the game, all that healing gets funneled into Cauterizes for the most part. So that's what we saw more often than not. Ruckus got burned down, Jab Jab got burned down to the Grover. That results in what we have now, which is a 1-1 going into map number three. It's going to be the last battle here of this best of three. We'll find out where we're going and who actually is end up meeting Toxicity in the end. We come back in just a bit. Welcome back, everybody. It will be the uh, <laughs> I I don't do we say favored or unfavored map here of Ice Mines as we don't traditionally see this one go through, but that's where we're going to be heading to. Makoa Terminus coming back to what we know, what I what I was anticipating for last game will be banned out. And Nara first overall selection. Torvald also picked up here, Major in. This has been the priority. It's been frontliners, frontliners, frontliners. Do we find some kind of crazy damage or, or flank pick here to try to counter out some of this? Because we saw no flanks whatsoever that last game, and a lot of strange damage coming out from Apoga, which led to their success, really. Well, off the bat, I'm a little nervous to see Bomb King picked up, because if I'm going based off of history, dank! Has not done too well in that. But if we're talking about flankers, the betting man in me would say no. We're not going to see any crazy flankers. But the Fanboy and me would love, <laughs> love to see a buck right now. That would be incredible. And that's kind of the big question, Mark, now that Terminus is in the play, is you're letting either Terminus or Buck or Makoa, one of the three, have to go through, and those have been the priority bans for a lot of characters and a lot of teams uh, as of late. Uh, so as you mentioned, Bomb King will be locked in as one damage dealer for Mapogo. Maybe they can turn him around and have some success here. Geno's locked in for one of their first four picks, looking for their last one. Shaolin Maldaba on the other side. That's a really good start to a draft, just in general, for JNC. So now we're waiting on the, the last pickup here to see what exactly they want to uh, lock in with from Mapogo, with Genos already locked in, as you mentioned. but And Fernando. Okay, so Fernando locked in is, is an interesting one. Uh, Ice Mines is an opportunity for them to go ahead and utilize that character fairly well. A lot of close corner points that you can kind of defend against uh, some of incoming damage and give your backliners a little bit more damage opportunity but that also depends on what you decide to do with this last pick that they have meanwhile over on jab jab they need to go ahead and finalize their team composition and highlighting a very interesting healer that we haven't seen in a long time pip i, I kind of like this one if they do go with it but they i was actually on the opposite side of the fence i was going to be really upset if they picked the pip simply because that would mean that the first four characters they picked could all be very easily countered by one of the cheapest items in the game in Resilience. So that would have been a very interesting pick and an interesting choice, but it will actually be a Talus locked in. So we are going to see the potential of some flank here with Ruckus for some extra damage up front. Interesting. Well, I mean, it could be that way, but I mean, come on, let's be honest here. Pip is fun. Pip is more Pip, fun. I, Pip's than... one of my favorite characters. Don't get me wrong. It's nothing against Pip. Just the resilience has been really devastating yeah. <laughs> against that yeah. lineup. Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. So last pickup for the members of Mapogo. They want to go ahead and find Sue. They want to, oh, okay, Zen. Interesting. I, I'm taking a look to see at this lineup for the side of Jab Jab. What, if I was playing this in, what would you pick up here? Retaliation? Would you pick up the Smite or would you pick up the, the Billow, uh, the Smolder build? And... I think all three are relatively good options, and I think this Zin is going to be a big storyline to see how, whether it's either going to be, really both flanks, Talos and Zin, two of the most underplayed, or at least underseen flanks in the higher echelon of gameplay uh, coming to, to the field here, and I think both of the, this game really comes down to who will have the better flanking routes, and who can have the most impact in the back line, I mean... I, I don't know what you prefer as far as character scope. My Zen gameplay is almost as good as my Bomb King gameplay, which is not very high at, at all. Uh, well, the, the sad story is that both the characters we're talking about right now, Bomb King and Zen, hasn't necessarily performed in the exactly. uh, earlier earlier stages of this uh, set. And Zen actually hasn't even been shown the entire night, but I think there's a certain certain level of appreciation where uh, Kashi wants to go ahead and play Zen. Maybe he thinks he's the next uh, Samurai Champloo. But... That being said, <laughs> this is your turn. 
You go for it. This is our turn, but it's actually <laughs> up to them to decide what happens. We'll finish things out. This best of three coming at us in Ice Mines. Don't go anywhere. Let us know who you want to win on Twitter by before <laughs> At Uproar. <laughs> this was Shadow's idea. Major's idea. Don't, don't yell. It's Put it back in just a minute. Let us know who you want to win in chat, not Twitter. We'll be interested to check that out here in just a second. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We are on Ice Binds as our, for our final map, our third and final map. It will be Jab Jab and his mischievous crew on the left-hand side in the blue. It'll be Beanie 12K with the Talus selected, and he's got Raging Demon. You tried to with Mother's Grace and Nar. It will be Jab Jab himself on the Desert Shadow for Shaolin. Kodri will be using the Maldamba again. His spirit's chosen in Overdrive, currently selected for Conquester on the Ruckus. And over in the red jerseys, we got the members of Mapogo trying to go ahead and take this one against the members of Jab Jab. We've got Sky Scroiderman, Scroiderman on the, <laughs> the Torvald. We've got Psychoxy on Jino. So we've got Akashi Sinjuro on the Jin King. And we've got Dank on the Bomb King, as well as Yusin on the Fernando. And off the bat, the point fight is already breaking out. And it will be Akashi actually falling very low. Retaliation, the counter actually being put up. Will billow his way back through the smolder nicely and he's in the face of Jab Jab who is taking the first pot shot that will be a swirl right on through, but oh, it actually will be the counter to finish things off. Jab Jab not able to time that one out quite right. JNC is on the point first and foremost at 36%, but the numbers are staggering. The health pools just as well so. Finally, though, Talos able to find two low HP pools for a double commit, then a triple kill as he finds three straight looking Ooh. for a fourth. He will get the big blitz upper in and then teleport right on back for the HP pool. 69% for JNC and Beanie saving the day, if not narrowly, for the boys of JNC. Oh, man, just pinning Torvald up to the wall there. Jab Jab just giving the business. I'm definitely liking the way that Jab Jab are playing this time around, but I think that there's still some merit to the performance that we saw last time at M Mapogo. Oh, without a doubt, and that this very well could be a map that obviously does favor the defensive side so if Mapogo were to have one thing going for them it's the fact that their defenses have been really solid and they can do so and establish that very early on which they have done already two kills on this nice defensive area again the choke points are very staggering this u-shape that kind of comes between those narrow alleyways back to the neutral capture point you can see just how advanced this defense can get able to find two more kills here so the charge continues on defensively though for the red side of Mapogo as they zone even further forward. This is where things get dangerous though. If you extend too far and get wiped, that payload can move very quickly behind you if you're not able to sustain the defensive line. But I do like the way they're approaching it here. They're splitting up their resources saying, okay, well, if one side gets really heavily focused, we still have the rest to retreat back on. And if they don't get focused down and if they can survive, then we can still kind of have a two header attack formation that allows for us to still try to find a pick onto one of these guys. And they're going to go ahead and- uh, Time tried to come through to zone things away. As you're mentioning, Mapogo is very wisely at least backing up so they can continue to have this defense in full numbers. But Genos is going to be hitting that right click probably more often than his mouse wants him to everyone very very low but now very quickly thanks to again all the great legendary healing that comes out of the astral mark getting them back closer to full hp it will be the heat haze coming out for shaolin looking for kills but not able to find much as of yet we'll find finally track down the genos but the stellar wind has kept him very mobile not enough so as one impillar arrow pushed him back the second arrow finding the kill planted up for a double kill looking for a triple will find it just near the end of his life it was akashi at the back and not able to prevent that from happening and this is where jnc can really make a charge but again look how much time has been taken off the clock here we're at 32 seconds till overtime major can this really possibly go through I mean, yeah, it can. Because they staggered a couple of these deaths, because, you know, you just watch Akashi go down there, and then all of a sudden, you've only got four members up in front of you. You still have a fairly aggressive comp with three ultimates. I mean, I think that they have the potential to do so. It's just a matter of execution at this point. Uh, and it's going to come down to if there are any ultimates that want to be expended. Ooh, and this BD 12k is actually in the back line doing a rather good job of harassing before he fell. And that's actually two kills as Jab Jab fell down as well. So it's just the frontliners and supports, which can do a lot here. Is because the sustain is going to be so good from the Maldamba, but he's going to have a lot of work paid out for him. And then first and foremost, it has to come down to this Zin in the back line, who will actually be able to counter out one, which was the. What would have been the stun from. Maldama's reload mechanic, and then finding the second shot, that will result in a successful defense. 
And this is where the the real conversation of Ice Mines comes into play. It's so difficult to push through, and a lot of the itemization always seems to go the way of Master Riding, and we're actually seeing a couple instances of that very early on, primarily on Frontliners, but a couple other members are starting to opt into yellow items as well, Morale Boost, Chronoses, and one other instance of Morale Boost being picked up late. Or part of well, I like... I... I like Master Rider because it, at least at the very, you know, at the very front of it allows you to get to the point faster, which means that you can essentially get a better advantageous positioning on it. And if you have to go into a just capping point battle, who's going to cap the point first and right. who's going to get to that last point? This, this, this is how you do it. This map is not easy for anyone to get around. There's so many turns, corners, choke points, everything like of the nature. If there's any kind of AOE, you're asking for a bad time. So the fact that they went ahead and said, all right, Master Rider, let's go ahead and make sure at the very least we're capping first. What an interesting strategy. We've seen so often the Taluses will go and use their ultimate to dismount people early on. But on this map in particular, it's actually forced all of Mapogo to essentially dismount to deal with Talus, who just was very happy to just go ahead and move back towards his spawn with the teleport. But actually, now kills coming out from Pogo. That was an interesting opportunity for JNC to try to get themselves on point first, but not resulting in much. Immortal coming out to keep some damage away, and it will now go the way of the red team, who is at rather full HP. I didn't pale arrow against the staircase, though. Yeah. How fortunate was that for Jab Jab? Talus is here as well, played by Beanie, but has to back up as he's literally one fireball away from death. And that will be enough to keep things at kind of a stall point right now. 51% favoring Mapogo, but here comes the rest of JNC. Shaolin is not here, though, so it's going to have to be big. Dread Super coming out for JNC. This could be the opportunity they need, but Dank on the Bomb King is actually having a performance now that we can talk about as he's found himself another big kill and a couple of other big Stinky Bomb explosions on the Maldamba, who is now forced away and has to use a Gord on himself. But Zin is here to convert the kill and Jab Jab again in danger. We'll be facing against multiple Overtime. different damage dealers. Major, where has this Mapogo team been? They're looking so solid all of a sudden. Yeah, it's all coming from Dank, who is not exactly showing up in previous games, but now he's got a performance that he can actually write home about, and he's actually starting it out by just making sure that he gets bombs off, sticky bombs onto anyone who is trying to get on this point, staggering those deaths, making sure that he's keeping a lot of the damage numbers up. He doesn't have to have the highest KDA, but he needs to have the highest A. At the very least, his assist numbers need to be up there. And 5, 3, and 10, he's making sure his kill participation is out of this world. So many jokes to be made about having such a nice A, but... You know, we'll you can just, go we'll there play. and I set you up for it. I, I think you did, plate. but I'll, I'll, I'll take the hard pass. We'll just mention it in passing. Two minutes until overtime, and now Mapogo having a lot more success here on the payload than their counterparts of JNC. Seismic Crash will stall out this offense for a little bit, but Zinn and Fernando are pushing very, very quickly into Shaolin, who has had very little success thus far, is forced just away in retreat and... Literally with his tail between his legs, Geno's trying to find a cheeky little corner. We'll be able to find a Nara right through the Ice Mines area. But still, the fact of the matter is, this defense has not really held up whatsoever. They have a full minute and a half until overtime. The payload is starting to get through one of the last checkpoints, and that's this very dangerous underpass. And it's going to come down to who can control the high ground. Dank is offering himself as the first subject to get up there, but Jab Jab will change that very quickly with a kill of his own. Now all of a sudden it's a matter of whether or not these guys in Mapogo can push through the final point and they should be able to do so. Oh, Zen able to get something done there. He's going around the backside looking over at the Sonara. And meanwhile, Fernando just acting as a front liner to the rest of the attention of the guys on Jab Jab. They're actually going to have to walk back a little bit here. Don't want to try and overdo it. Yeah, but this is still a big opportunity moving forward. Shaolin is in the heat haze, looking for an opportunity to get a kill, possibly on the dank. He will withdraw right past the Grumpy Bomb and get the kill. A nice closing of distance for him to secure one final kill. And that health pool might just be enough to keep this defense where they need to be. The frontliners now falling in a little bit of danger. Health pools are being shooed away at. Not a lot of shield left for Torval, but fortunately there is one for Fernando. Zinn in the back line, looking forward, will use this world to get on through and get back towards, again, the safe haven of that plasma shield in front of him. Oh, well, that's not going to be very safe for Fernando, who takes one planted arrow and will fall to his death and take the death cap back to base. 15 seconds until overtime. And the defense here, and this is why we say this map is so difficult to get a two straight point push on. It's just so hard to come down this this little alleyway as Jab Jab and Benny alike are able to get aggressive and finish off those kills. It will be Zinn close to point, but not enough to send that one into an overtime. 2-2 goes the score. We're even through two rounds.
All tied up. But I mean, just going back to what you said, you said it without having to fully explain. The tiny, teeny, tiny core. Like, <laughs> there's no point in which you can just be like, okay, we're not all grouped up or all in the same area. Do, 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 do. Oh, God. Oh, God. Everything's coming down on me at one time. It, like, there's just so few points of protection or safety coming down this alleyway. And then to top that off, there's a lot of vantage points for defending teams. You have a lot of escalated points where you can just rain down damage. You have a lot of points to even recover back to in the event that somebody responds. And you can get into a safe positioning. And it's much easier to access those points for the defending team as opposed to the offensive team. Very solid points. And the, getting the point first and foremost is going to be the priority for Mapogo, who have Master Riding 2s for almost everybody, with the exception of Genos, who obviously has to go into Kronos 2. Talos Ultimate came out once again, but not able to find much Hyper Beam. Also not finding much success, so Mapogo is left for a trade for trade on Ultimates. Here comes the Hexafire through space and time. Will actually not connect in time as it was, in fact, Ruck is falling quickly. Dread Serpent coming out, a lot of activity on the point. Ooh, here comes the big Ultimate, the Smite out from Zid, but not able to connect on any bodies, but still Mapogo will even up and then exceed the previous level of capture point percentage that JNC has. They're now above 50%. Fernando's pushing right on through and will find himself meeting up against what was a stunned Ruckus thanks to that Grumpy Bomb proximity. But he will be able to fall back to save his life. The shield coming out, Anar trying to get there. With Seismic Crash coming out, we'll find two stuns, but there's four players there to deal damage, and Anara falls very quickly. Meanwhile, on the backside of this fight, it's going to be up to the rest of the frontliners for JNC to get here, which is just Ruckus, but Jam Jam, surprisingly, able to find two kills. Looking for a triple, it will be Kohir able to find that third bit. 96% is where it stalls off, and that retake could not have come at a better time. Now, all of a sudden, we've changed the story entirely. I was going to say Mapogo looking very strong to take this point, but at the end of the day, it looks like Jab Jab's crew is going to be able to pick this one up. The only person standing in the way is Jin, and he's not in any kind of position or any type of character to stand between four members of the opposing team and actually stop them from having the point. Oh, Over time, still got him, here, though, and it's going to be an immortal actually being used most likely for Fernando, who's falling low with his shield, but is catching himself a gourd. Now the immortal comes out, keeping Torvald and himself alive, but where's the damage? Dake needs to come back big if he wants to. Shaolin falls for the side of JNC, so no damage here. 99 to 96% favoring JNC, but it's actually the team in red who's got the numbers. But Pogo with the through space, and time will find Beanie. So one more time, the flanker falls. Now it's actually Ruckus and Meltamba falling, and Nara's too low, and Mapogo recaptures. They get themselves through the overtime first and capture the point. Three to two, the score goes in favor of Mapogo. That is incredible. Mapogo looked like they weren't able to, they weren't going to be able to go ahead and get on that point and try and defend it and, and take it back. But all of a sudden, just a couple of key moments, just a couple of seconds extra from the frontliners gave them the opportunity. And Nara saying, all right, I'll walk on this. You pop your mortal and then come with me, Fernando, because we want this point. We need to have this advantage. This gives us a lot more leeway to maybe potentially put this game out of reach. And talk about Jettos, who was down to the Meldamba, is now almost even with him at healing, thanks to that focus onto the Fernando and Torval, which kept them alive through a lot of that point. But still, now the payload is moving a minute and 40, about five seconds until overtime. And once again, the red team of Bapogo has already moved at about 75% of it away, not having faced much issue in that long, snaky corridor, which usually serves as one of the hardest points to get through. Alice trying to make his way through with an ultimate, not able to find anything besides the Zin, though his force is way back. Now Torvald, the next focus. Jab, jab here, Dread Server coming out. That's being used just to convert that one HP pool. May not have been necessary completely, but still, the security is something that they need on defense at the moment. One death for one ultimate is something that you'll take. And, oh, actually, that's interesting. Know. Beanie not able to find the kill on the, the Fernando will be taken down. So Talus falling is going to force, actually, JNC to kind of take more of a retreative passive force on this defense. Mapogo has an opportunity to move here again. I don't know if I like that Maldumbo ultimate we saw earlier because now all of a sudden they have to deal with that same five-fledged team from Mapogo and find another answer as far as CC goes. And now Immortal comes out from Fernando. They're still uh -oh. looking very strong to get through here. Yeah, but he put down his shield in some kind of an awkward cooldown toggle. So that actually forced him to use Sprint to try to get away, but Jab Jab in the Heat Haze was able to find that kill plus one more. Psychoxy on the Genos is forced to run away. The Stellar Wind will be enough momentum to get him away from that fight. 30 seconds until overtime. Torvald is here, but he's relatively by himself and has to be pretty careful. 
as Jab Jab finds himself one more kill before Yosin on the Fernando punishes him for his life. But still, that's the Genos down, and not having a support is going to make things very difficult. Fernando's trying to contest 13 seconds, and Torvald finds himself a support as well. So now it, it tilts in favor of Apogo. Zin in front to the Ruckus. He does have himself in a minute, but will be able to take down the Zin very quickly. Anara stunned away. Will she fall? She will. Four seconds, three seconds. We're going to hit overtime. Conquestor actually takes himself, not really able to advance. He gets stuck on the staircase, and they finds himself a long-range Sticky Bomb to convert that kill. Now it's going to be up to just Jab Jab and the rest of his boys to get the respawn timers back, but Torvald is here. He has a Hyper Beam available if he chose to use it. This could very well be the end. Seismic Crash comes out, used on the Torvald, who still somehow survives through most of it. He will eventually fall Psychoxy down the next focus. He's trying to find a way to delay, but it will be the defensive side of JNC surviving and holding on to that one, but that was narrow, and they had to use the Seismic Crash for it. That's a game-changing ultimate when it comes to the capture point. But I love the maturity and I love the veteranship. Well, maybe not even veteranship. I love the sensibility of the guys in Mapogo. They said, we could use Hyper Beam. We could use some of these ultimates. Yeah. But we're going to wait because we know at the end of the day, cap point is more guaranteed than this defense. We can exhaust all our resources just to try and potentially on a difficult map push this payload. But at the end of the day, we know that we have a stronger chance on this cap point, and I like the fact that they have the maturity to say, all right, we're going to go for the cap point. We are going to still have that risk factor of we put these guys on even grounds with us. Next point wins, but we have the confidence in our team to go ahead and do that. And they have four ultimates and a half-charged immortal for Fernando, so let's see how this point fight breaks out. Talus will be using his ultimate first and foremost. What will he find? The answer is not a whole lot. He's trying to chase down the Genos, but able to escape with Stellar Wind for a while, but it will be a Blitz Upper to take away the rest of the health pool from Genos. So the first, oh, but the Hyper Beam, hold your horses. Anara going off the map. I'm about to say the first point favoring the side of JNC, but now an opportunity starts to sprout for the side of Apogo. Oh, King fire. Bomb coming to the back line. Hexafire up front. Trades one for one. Talos is trying to convert the rest of that kill. A nice poppy bomb away. And it will be Dank escaping with his life while Conquester, though, on the other side for JNC, able to find himself a second and almost a third yep. kill. So it's 51%, <laughs> yep. uh, but it's stalling out. No one contesting it. Anara is trying to get aggressive. 60% and now climbing Apogo in a tough spot. You know, I think that Mapogo, even though they had the right mindset, I like the decision they made, executed a little poorly. But, I mean, off the bat, losing somebody within the first 10 seconds, this is kind of really unfortunate. 99% uh... and Torvald was just barely, narrowly able to get himself onto point. So an opportunity brewing. Shadow Travel is not there, but it's going to be the Heat A's. Coming through through space oh. and time, not able to be utilized for any kills earlier in that fight. Fernando's here, he does not have his immortal as of yet. He's the last hope, and it will fall very quickly. The heat haze from Jab Jab finding two of those four kills and a lot of the health pool in those other ones. JNC just narrowly survives against Mapogo. They will be our other finalists going up against Toxicity. No, dang! <laughs> what happened? No, but I really think the job, uh, you know, Jab Jab and the crew did really good. I mean, there was definitely some points where they weren't able to really close out these guys in Mapoga. But I, I, I think that at the end of the day, it was nice to watch these guys develop over a set, over a, yeah. you know, a series to just say, all right, Dank, we know your Bomb King is better than what you showed us the first game. Can you please do a little bit better? And, and the, look at the damage numbers. It's really close. You don't really <laughs> see why all of a sudden the, the team with the higher average damage numbers, at least, you know, slightly, uh, didn't win. And you take a look. I mean, you mentioned it being close there, but also the healing category, also very close. I mean, you're only looking at a difference of about 11.5K between both healers in a long game. That's a really close battle between the Jettos and the Meldamba. So... Tilt just very narrowly at the end in that last team fight. Jab Jab going off. He finds himself 23 killing blows on top of having nine assists. And that was a number that stands out, having himself a seven streak near the end there as well. East is the one who comes through and puts this one to bed and gets his team on through to the finals. They will, be, again, meet up against Toxicity. That's going to be a good one. Both teams from North America, of course, props up to Mapogo from Brazil playing on high ping, able to keep themselves in that game for as long as possible, but falling just a bit short this time. So we have the finals right coming at us. Toxicity Twitter up against <laughs> coming up against jab, jab and his naughty children. Again, Twitter at uproar. We know that for sure. Now we checked because I wasn't sure to begin with, but it is at uproar 
if you want to go ahead and let us know who you think might be taking this one away. And of course, if you're interested in playing in the following weeks, make sure to go to Uproar.gg where you can find out all the information, rule set, and participation uh, steps to get yourselves involved. We always like having more people to come through. There are solo signups as well, so if you're someone who just wants to participate, go in as a free agent, sign yourself up, and you might be able to get paired up with some awesome lucky friends of yours, or maybe new friends of yours. I'm sure, I'm going to make Major and I play, we're going to play games at some point. I know this is not his main game, but we're going we're to do it. <laughs> Alright, carry me. I'll try. I'm not playing Bomb King or Talos, though. So. I'm heavy. <laughs> we'll be back with the finals. Best of three set coming up. Jab, Jab's Naughty, Chill, Toxicity. Don't go anywhere. Well, and welcome everybody to the Grand Finals. Starting everything off, it will in fact be Toxicity versus Jab Jab and his naughty group of children. I can't, I can't, I can't say it seriously anymore. You've ruined it for me. I'm sorry, but he's not even, he's not even in the game right now, so you might as well, <laughs> True. you know. That is a good point. Jab Jab has had to step out, so it will be actually Jig Dog taking the place. Again, I hold shift with Major bringing you guys the coverage. It will be Terminus Band and Mave Band, interestingly enough, for the side of Toxicity. First overall selection. Oh, okay. Go figure. Makoa will be available, so he will be taken. Why not? Uh, seems I, to always I mean, go that way. You know, if Makoa's on the table, he's always going to be an option. Having that hook is always so crucial for getting picks because you can get one of these immobile characters and put them out of position take advantage of them, and then go about your business. Now, yeah. the fact that I, you know, the fact is, is that I think that you usually draft around that idea, but so far it looks like they don't really care too much. Already highlighting and locking in a Nara and looking and thinking about a Shaolin. I mean, Shaolin has a little bit of mobility, but it's not really that heavy. No, not, not so much, but I mean, we have seen what carry potential a Shaolin can bring to the table, just the amount of damage and his ability not only to either burst down characters or finish characters that are above about that third HP health pool level, for most of them at least, uh, is, is really devastating. Especially when you add that Desert Wind Legendary, adding that bonus damage into it can be extremely powerful. Maldamba will be locked in for the side of JNC, getting their first support locked in here and looking for... I don't know, at this point, do you go for something that could possibly counter? They were selected the Drogos for a second, then denied it. It looks like it will just be a Fernando, so not showing any cards as far as what they want for their damage dealing potential, but revealing everything up front so far. I really hope this will be locked in. Oh my god, it's actually locked in! Indraxis! I think this is actually the third flank we've seen tonight, overall, out of all of our games. That's yeah. actually pretty impressive. Yeah, but Shadow one. locking in the Ruckus. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, going back to this Androxus, I really, not for any sensible reason, but I like it because it's a, a different variety. It's a different take on what we've seen for the majority of the night. And the Androxus pick here is really strange to me, I think. Just simply because... Yeah, you can, go ahead and, you can go ahead and cut this slice it out you want it. You can go ahead and say exactly what we're all thinking. It's weird. It's, it's stupid. For, I mean, you haven't seen any damage dealers yet, and that's what I was afraid of, is so far all you have is Shaolin that can deal with the frontline, and Androxus means that you can get around, but if they were to take another frontliner or deal, or somebody who can deal with Androxus nicely or at least counter his mobility, it could be a dangerous game. So the EV Torvald actually makes a lot of sense here. Now, my problem with this triple frontline composition, Shadow, is the simple fact that between Makoa, Torvald, and Fernando, that's not a lot of damage. So literally, you're just relying on Eevee to deal your damage. Meanwhile, it is Geno's taken uh, to finish things off. So the Ruckus and the Inara will have some trouble chewing through those health pools. But Shaolin's going to have a lot of free space as long as the Eevee doesn't get too annoying. And Androxus will have a... a really, I feel like the Androxus is going to be playing bodyguard for a lot of this for Shaolin. Just to keep Eevee yeah. away. But it's just interesting. though... Even even though Androxus doesn't exactly have a lot of you know great targets to go for, I, I don't think he's going to be playing guard dude. I think that honestly Androxus is going to be his only job, his main focus is going to be trying to give as much pressure onto Maldamba as possible because we already know that Eevee is going to be focused on trying to p pressure out Shaolin. Shaolin can typically speaking take care of himself. He has a, a stick to the wall. He has a, uh, a movement ability that's going to allow him to you know replace himself. He has a lot of kit to keep himself alive and then couple that with the fact that he does have 
have a fairly good healer in the in the aspect of Janos, I mean, I think he's going to be fine. What I want to see out of Androxus is more aggression and just trying to make the lives of even the frontliners a bit more difficult. Go ahead. Go on the backside. See what you can do. Shadow, he's fine. You know Shadow, right? Oh, I yeah. mean, well, I mean you played like a voice. game with him. You played like a <laughs> game with him. It, it, wasn't, it, it, it wasn't anything special. It wasn't even a ring. so much right? shade over here. <laughs> But the point is that, you know, I, I think that for me personally, my definitive marker for this game is how well both Shadow can keep himself alive and keep himself in this game. And then how well X Revy, or excuse me, not X Revy, that actually popped up in the spot of where I was looking. Uh, how well we actually uh, see its aspect uses Androxus. Okay, well, we'll come to find out who will survive the flank pressure of Androxus and the triple frontline composition of JNC. We'll find out here soon. Stone Keep, map number one, coming up in a bit. All right, Stone Keep is where we go. Map number one, I hold shift major coming at you guys. JNC in the blue. BD12K will be rocking the currently over the moon EV. Will be Conquestor with the direct current. Selected for the Torvald Spirits, chosen for Kori on, once again, the Baldamba. Pluck Makoa for you tried to, and formidable for Jig Dog. We anticipate that's probably going to change. We'll visit that later. <laughs> I would imagine. Over, over in the red jerseys, we've got Toxicity, x Ruffy playing Anara, a Wild Vane playing Ruckus, Shadow playing Shaolin, its Aspect playing Androxus, and I as Maris playing the Genos. Fordable selected, Fordable locked in. I'm confused. Jig Dog will be taking the high ground, trying to get their first impasse ball. Will deny that. Now changing focus. He had thrown a fireball out that connected with a couple of HP pulls, but healed back up very quickly by the Genos. There's a lot of that. The treacherous ground coming into play. As you can see, literally, there is no mobility really going out whatsoever for the frontliners of JNC. First blood going the way of Shadow. Make that a double kill. Can he find possibly more? Looking for Fernando, who again has the formidable online, but is not going to be all that formidable at all as he falls to Revy. Two players left alive for JNC. Two Ooh. players will likely fall as Torvald backpedals away. And oh, Shaolin, they're cutting wow. him off too. They're just staggering it out so nicely. 48%. Torvald's still alive. Now will finally fall. Shadow converting that last HP pool. 66% and counting Genos is left to play spectator so far as one Impaler Arrow actually puts Makoa on his back for a second. Looking for now the Eevee, a nice pull, but the impasse ball will block all of that traveling path. Interesting, ice block for the Eevee. Well, as she retreats back upwards, and Drox is now trying to plug away at about medium to close range. They've got a reversal. Looking for one will connect, but he did get nullified out, so that silence will be enough to take him down. 96% is where it stalls for Toxicity. Shaolin coming into play with the Heat Haze, looking for damage this time onto Fernando. He will be able to connect two, three shots in a row. Now looking for the Torvald, who gets Void Grip midair. That will be enough to put this one out of overtime and in favor of Toxicity 1-0 as soon as Eevee gets off the point. Yeah, so you might notice something after this first point cap, and that is that if you look over the scoreboard, this is a little alarming. Uh, out of that whole first cap, there's only been one kill in favor of the guys of Jab Jab. Yeah, that's not what you want to start things off with. Again, if you're playing this triple front line, you need to be up and all together at all at once, and that has yet to be the case. They tried to pull that church or that pardon me, that keep side flank, but has not gone well. It's Aspect able to find himself to a cursed arm coming out. will find himself a third. That one in double kill fashion. And now a seismic crash will connect and a triple kill. All of those shots going into the face of Fernando. Face mask down or not, he still finds all of that damage straight into the noggin. And now it's all Aspect able to convert. And oh my goodness, Shadow and Aspect alike able to find mid-air shots onto Eevee to convert her health pool. So now a minute 43 till overtime and Toxicity is dominating the scoreboard. I mean, I, I think at this point, the main concern right now is whether or not Jab Jab's crew can actually find some way to you know, break this, what seems like hard eggshell. Uh, oh, oh, oh. All the damage right now. Through space and time, able to find Makoa. It's Aspect finding himself two straight kills. Shadow, another one. It's now just up to Fernando to try to hold the front. Punches are coming out like Mike Tyson from its Aspect, not even needing the revolver as he keeps funneling that through. And that is enough for Shadow to find not one but two kills. One more punch will help him find the third. And Toxicity, I, I, we can go back to your train of thought as this has just been a complete steamroll. Toxicity uh, dominating the scoreboards all over the place. 
I, I'm just looking at their items and seeing how much credits they earned without ever actually, at, you know, going back to base. I mean, this is pretty ridiculous. Just in the first wave, they've already gotten so much of an advantage. And on, on top of that, they still have. Uh, oh my gosh, I just noticed how many kill streaks they have. Yeah, seconds. it's all flashing red and fire for toxicity. Everybody is up above seven. Shadow, the only one down below that due to a death he found in the middle of that fight. But Five. the only category that's ha, really close right now is right at feeding, clearly, is the healing category. Genos is actually leading by a mere about about 600 HP points so far. So at least there's something positive happening for JNC at the moment. EV flying with the over the moon, but chased down very nicely by Andronsis, who has been oh. on EV duty more often than not, letting Shadow just plug away at these frontliners, which he has done. Cursed Arm coming out looking for damage. It will actually find, well, there it is, finally finding the Meldamba at the last bit. Avoid grip of the Mel the Makoa, who was in Ancient Rage. One last headshot at medium range for its ass, but to find that kill. And another one on the Torvald as he tried to peek around the corner. Aspect showing off that precision aim and getting all of the death done. He did take Death Darko as far as I remember, as far as his uh, legendary went, but it's not making much of a difference what he takes. He's finding kills all over the place. Immortal pop for Fernando, but that's just a mere courtesy and delay of time at this point as Aspect goes off with the right hand once again, or the right click with the left hand, able to find the kill on Makoa. Hyper Beam used to push people off point, but it's just a mere stagger of deaths at this point. 84%, 87 and counting up. Toxicity has not lost their kill streaks yet. This has just been all red team at this second part of the game. They've only got two deaths. Two actual deaths. There's only two kills on the side of Jab Jab's crew. The naughty children have... And it may be because... We have to give this disclaimer. It may be because Jab Jab's not there. Jab Jab has definitely had a very crucial uh, performance and a very needed... This is why I'm not even looking at it. This is a very needed level of aggression for these guys. Maybe that's a factor, but this is this is one-sided. Yeah, Danny left the kids at home by themselves, and they are not showing up whatsoever. Another accursed arm is ready. A nice cheeky pathway for the Androxus, and that Hexafire combination with the seismic crash as well. Able to find two kills. Vayne fighting himself one. It was three more kills for its aspect, and he's on a 30 streak, ladies and gentlemen. And how many of those are final blows? 21. 21, 1, and 12. This is incredible. I, mean, <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, the Andrasis reformed. That's what we were looking for. That was what we were kind of uh, saying would be a definitive factor. And uh, he's more than stepped up to the plate here. But I, I think more alarming is the fact that Jab Jab. Oh, oh, another kill. Come on. No, no. This is just a clinic by that aspect right now. I don't know if he's missed more than maybe a shot per clip in this entirety of this entire game. I mean, what an incredible performance. Toxicity rolls away at this one pretty simply for nothing on stone keep in, uh, again, rapid fashion. Uh, but, I mean, as you look forward, you take a look at Toxicity. This is a, a solid PGS team. They'll be playing, not next week, but the week after in the finals as uh, being up there. They're one of, a, one of the middle seeds uh, coming in. But, I mean, they're playing so solid over the last handful of weeks and you take a look at what the NA region has to bring in the middle of the pack and this is uh, definitely a showcase of what the strength and just the efficiency is of this squad. We've seen them pull off so many great combined ultimates, but this time through it's just straight mechanical gameplay coming out of Toxicity. Two. Two is the, two is the number of kills yeah. they, they yeah, actually pulled bad. off against this this supposed team. And this is not to discredit Jab Jab's crew because there are multiple factors, one of which is the team captain is gone, but the other which is the, the fact that I, I, you know, I don't know what the level of experience is for this team. I, I mean, I know that they are a veteranship team on this particular tournament platform, but at, at the same time, you have to recognize that this team they're up against, Toxicity, is a much more veteranship team. They play together a lot longer, they are more familiar with each other, and they are much more familiar with how they operate. So there's a definite thing that has to be appreciated there holy crap it's aspect went 23 and 1 uh yeah. but you know <laughs> at the end of the day yeah. I, I think that if you want to try and change the story if you want to try and change jab jabs uh, result this game i don't know if it's a draft uh a draft change per se but i definitely think it's a performance change in terms of how they focus and how they you know kind of uh, shot call because I think that, that that was one of the factors. There was several moments where one member of Toxicity was low, 
but we just never saw that actually result in the kill. Yeah, you no, know, you actually bring up a really good point there, and that was the key as well when you take a look at it, is how many of these kills were close to coming through, but just not quite there, and you, you say that so many times, and it turns into that steamroll that we have. So we'll be back with map number two. We'll leave you guys with some calling music to try to cool the nerves as we go into map number two of this best of three in the finals in just a bit. And welcome back, everybody. It is map number two, Jaguar Falls, underway. And it will be the side of JNC now able to get at least some kind of control in some fashion as they will have first band, first pick on map number two. Uh, I mean, we were talking for a while about what do you do to try to take away something or at least keep yourself in some kind of regard between you and what we're seeing coming out of toxicity and that will be both frontliners taken away. Is there really a priority here? I mean, can you really weaken toxicity or do you just need to go to your strengths, play your own games and hope that you guys can come back together and make something happen? Do you want to ban Androxus? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you want to first pick Androxus? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hashtag scripted. Major got an so advance. Sorry. Major got an advance on the copy of the script. I don't have it sitting here in front of my face, but it will be first pick in Droxus. So um, you can just go ahead and take over the rest of the draft. I clearly have no idea what I'm talking about. I am so sorry. I should have laughed that hard. <laughs> that was incredible. But it was it was one of those things where I had to sit there and rationalize within my own mind. Do you really fear in Droxus, which is is not a bad pick. It's just. It's not really a priority pick in your your typical ranked, your right. typical competitive, it, it, like any higher level paladins. This is not a character that you just fear. But the fact that the fact that we saw such a high level of performance from Toxicity, they had to respect it to the point of picking it. And I understand why they're doing it. I understand why it makes sense to them. But at the end of the day, that is still something that you had to give a first slot pick for. The other side of it, though, I mean, the roster, as you look into it, we're seeing the Drogos, Bob King, and Cirrus come out. So all targets that Androxus could do rather well with. Uh, Genos Fernando, the other two picks, and Maeve currently highlighted over. So, and, and Lex, okay, so we're, instead of three frontliners, we're going to go with three flanks uh, to see if that has any better success for us. Uh, I mean, this will be an interesting battle, I think. If they can get the flexibility, I mean, there's a chance to at least pick up a handful of kills, but the problem's going to come down to can they control point? Uh, that's going to be the big question mark, I feel like. I think at this point they're just taking a Hail Mary. They recognize that there is a certain level of outclassing or outskill that is happening here, and so they want to go ahead and try and throw their best at it. And if this is just a result of them saying, we're picking our best characters and Androxus happens to be one of them, I respect it. I really do, because at the end of the day, if you know that you don't as a team, as a team, not individually, uh, outmatch or outclass the people you're up against, you might as well go ahead and pick what you're comfortable with and then just go from there. But we're going to have to have to – you know, we're going to have to see exactly if this is just them picking their best. And it will be the last final pick going the way of Evie. So their flanker of their own is Toxicity. And again, JNC, a bit of trouble as they look down at the very daunting 1-0 after that 4-0. Uh, but they might be able to bring it back. I mean, it comes down to how flexible they could be here on Jaguar Falls. Uh, we'll see if these three flankers will have more of an impact against Toxicity. Come back and find out the results as we possibly close this one out in just a bit. And welcome as we look down towards the realm of Serpent Beach below us. Jaguar Falls is located here. It will be JNC rocking the blue, and they will be having let up with Beanie 12K playing Lex with Death Hasten is currently selected. Jig Dog again is going for the formidable on Fernando. Cat Burglar is selected for Conquester. Interesting left for Maeve. It will be Luminary for You Try to on Genos and Godslayer for Adroxus, played by Curry014. And then over on the red side of the map, we've got the members of Toxicity. A Wild Vane playing Bomb King. I as Marius playing the uh, Sirius. We've got It's Aspect playing Eevee. Shadow playing Drogos. And X Revy playing Anara. Uh, it's interesting because Formidable is one of those legendaries that hardly anyone selects, the other one being Cat Burglar. Uh, interesting to see both of those coming out. We'll see how they play. Conquest was actually the first one to get first blood, actually, onto Eevee, who tried to come through this sun rim, this torch rim, and not able to get through anywhere. 
prowling her way out is Conquester on the Eevee, not looking for Shadow on Drogo, not able to find it, so he finds Ceres instead. Asmaris falling very low, will take a pounce to the face, but that actually oh. will demand Soul to get the rest of that health pool back and the kill conversion oh. on Maeve. Kills coming out for Shadow as well, three straight down for JNC. On the point is Fernando trying to heal back up with that formidable, but again, he's falling himself back into an impasse wall while on the mean side, and Droxus is able to find a kill for his life, trading away with Eevee before he fell. 45% now for Toxicity. The triple flank started well, but not finding themselves as much success here in the later stages of the fights. Well, I would actually argue they've, they've found at least to some level more success because they have three kills now as opposed to two that they ended with last time. So to some degree, they have definitely found more success. The question is whether or not they can convert that into points on this payload. And it looks like the first one at the very least is going to go the way of uh, Toxicity. Indeed it will. A lot of chaos has been provided though for JNC. You can kind of see Vayne, who's on the Bomb King, was looking left, right, and front, behind, trying to find all these different flankers. So the chaos factor is there, but once the focus gets here for Toxicity, things start to go their way. Help coming from Conquester as Wild Vayne trades out his life, taking down Lex before he fell. Jigdog on the Fernando is now looking to set up the defense a little bit more aggressively, but again, you can just see how circling this offense, uh, this, uh, sorry, this defensive pressure is. Maeve is trying to circle around, trying to find kills on the outside. Shadow finding himself a double kill, though. Oh, Haven't stayed on board with him on the Drogos play as of yet. The Worm Jet selection. What a prediction from Shadow. Able to connect two straight shots and then one easy killing blow found with the nice fire spit. Dragon's Fury coming out looking for Fernando, who will sprint right into it to put a little bit of insult to injury there. And that will be enough for not only just the kill, but a little bit of flare on top. Maeve takes one rocket before falling down to Eevee with the Ice Staff putting in some play there. As actually Aspect has not had quite the game that you could say he had on Androxus previously, but able to get some work done there. And at this point, it looks like JNC is just trying to find a way out of base. Uh, they're just trying to find a way away from dying. They just want to not actually get picked off as quickly as they've, as they've been picked off. And unfortunately, the story remains that it just looks like Toxicity is a little bit outclassing these guys. Yeah, that's definitely for sure. Mechanically, skill-wise, efficiency, Wild Vein able to hit one long-distance bomb there and now looking for a remote detonation, possibly against Androxus, who has gone up and over but has not fooled Wild Vein whatsoever. Able to hit one proximity nade there, missing the other two. So Shadow will clean that one up for his teammate, who now refocuses on Fernando, who gets stunned out by a grumpy bomb and then taken down by the same dealer of damage as he finds again a long-range sticky. A incredible play from Vayne thus far. Oh, I mean, no, there he, he goes. Burning 12k getting a kill. Falls at the end. But regardless, the damage has been done 2 nothing thus far. Well, Bernie 12K, if we're going to go ahead and look for the light at the end of the tunnel, could be the saving grace of the guys on the side of Java. Uh, jab, jab. Uh, we have 5, 4, and 2 Lex, which is not necessarily something to brag about when you look at the uh, rest of the KDAs or but the scoreline. He's positive. You, he's positive, which we are going to remain positive here on this desk and say that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that he would be the, uh, he'd be the uh, direction to go to. The proverbial Three, god two, in this instance, I guess one, you could say, for exactly. JNC. Interestingly enough, it's actually Aspect on top of the damage charts. 4, 2, and 8 is the scoreline. 25.6k, just about 100 above his teammate in Shadow, who we're spectating now. And he's got a nice Ice Storm off, does Aspect, setting up his teammates, but not a lot of focus. Bomb King now converting on top of that with a King Bomb. And that's going to be enough for all of the blasting damage come through to find all five kills. All right. Interesting combination of Ice Storm and King Bomb there in that torch room to set things up. Dragon Punch is being channeled, looking for a kill. Everyone will start to move towards base, but Fernando gets poked in the butt there by all five Ooh. fingers of the Dragon and able to get his team oh. his first blood in this next engagement. Make that second and third as well, looking for fourth, but back into base goes the rest of JNC. While meanwhile, Toxicity is able to convert and go up 3 nothing. although there's actually a Mave on point who snuck right by me and was able to actually take Anara out, or pardon me, Saris out, while Anara gets taken out by the law. Overtime will fight away, though, so now a couple of ultimates coming into play. A cursed arm from downtown, not able to find anything. Fernando not able to get the point in time, and there is the 3-0, as you're very astutely saying. 
I mean, they almost had a chance. They almost did end up taking away that initial cap point. But the problem is, is that even if they took it away, there's just such a high barrier for them to actually end up taking that point for themselves that it didn't really matter. But at the same time, it would have been a morale boost that could have potentially led to a series of events. As you see, Inara and Maeve do a weird little exchange oh there. My goodness this mechanical play from aspect coming out he's on a 17 streak and was able to connect a couple of really key shots but not able to finish off the health pool of lex with it blinking in and out he's got himself a chronos too just to get that over the moon up as much as possible blinking now in front of the genos easy shots right in front of him for a double kill looking around the backside for possibly a triple it will be mave as his target and able to find one shots two shots for three straight kills another full team wipe coming out three of the five coming at the hands of the winner witch herself you know, I'm not really laughing at them in a negative outlet. I'm just saying, like, you know, if you get team wiped three to four times in a single game uh, before any kind of 10-minute marker, it just doesn't tend to the idea that you're doing okay in the matchup. Right, and the three flankers have provided them that chaos that has led to more kills, but the results seemingly being the same. Over the moon, able to allow Aspect to cover outside the Linens a little bit as he moves in okay. and out of the map. And now coming back in, the Flicker able to push right back in and finding the kill Ooh. once again, coloring outside the lines up and over, but actually falling to Androxus there who was keen on it. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Or something of the nope, fact. Nope. The portal coming out will not be able to allow Shadow to convert for that ultimate. He will just put it right into the back of that CC immune and damage immune. Fernando, but it's actually Wild Vane who finds himself three looking for four. We caught that one. That's four of five. And drops this last one left alive. Can he finish off the ace? The accursed arm midair will take him out of his kill streak, but regardless, not there to contest the point. Toxicity walks it on in. 4 0, 2 0, and they take themselves as the victors. I mean, there's not really much to say about that from an analytical standpoint. There's That's just really a very heavy-sided, one-sided game. But the one thing I will say, best support uh, was actually on the opposing team, which is a good sign because that's the one thing that I want to remind everyone here who is watching, and unfortunately, I do apologize. I may have had a very negative look. But if we're going to be honest, Jab Jab's team did fairly well. There's just certain barriers that you have to overcome, and I think that they're right at the cusp of this barrier for this tournament series they did fantastic we watched them up against other teams do fairly well uh they had obstacles they had to overcome and they adapted to each and every single one of them and quite quite efficiently if i may add so they don't really have any reason to feel down about this matchup uh it just comes with experience without a doubt and you take that experience and you learn from it you watch it back you roll it back, you come on through, and you participate next week, and who knows what happens there. Again, shout-outs to all the participants this week, but it will be Toxicity running away with this tournament at a scoreline of 2 to nothing and maps in the Grand Finals. They will be the champions here this week. We will have Europe next week on Friday for Uproar, and until then, if you're looking to participate in the North American Series, feel free to, again, check out all the information on Uproar Series including a Brazilian one that ran yesterday, actually, interestingly enough. You can find all that on Uproar.gg, at Uproar on Twitter. I won't mess that one up again. And uh, closing thoughts from you, Major. Go team. Go team. Go team indeed. That's the best way to put it. So we'll complete <laughs> things on behalf of all the administrators at Uproar. I've been I hold shift with Major. Winner. Broadcast. Make sure you follow uh, everything on Twitter. Not just not just Uproar. <laughs> All so, of your recommendations, follow all of them. <laughs> if they want to disagree with you on anything you've said so far, where can they find you on Twitter? They can find me at the Major Crosby on Twitter. And uh, you said it wrong. <laughs> is that what? Is that all your handle? We'll figure it out. It would have been funny if you actually said it right, it. but you said it right. wrong. I'm the worst. Crosby is not my last name. Cosby. That's what it is. No R. Or no relation at the major cosby we'll be back next week thanks for tuning in everyone and enjoy the music on your way out we'll touch you guys next friday bye-bye